Are you confused about how uh, pricing for jet cards and jet memberships actually works in the different types of pricing? Well, I'm gonna explain to you the differences, make it very easy to understand. Uh, I'm Doug Gollin, I'm founder and editor of Private Jet Card Comparisons. So join me today and we're gonna explain the three types of pricing that you're gonna find when you buy into a jet card or a jet membership. So thanks for watching. So uh, you're thinking about buying into a jet card or jet membership. Don't worry about what they're called. Uh, the name, the marketing name, whether it's a membership program or a jet card, doesn't matter. What matters is the way that they're gonna price your trips and how it's gonna end up uh, uh, reflecting in what you actually pay. Uh, so there's three basic types of uh, jet card or jet membership pricing. The three types of pricing are dynamic pricing, uh, fixed, uh, fixed pricing, which is usually uh, hourly, although it can be fixed route pricing as well, and then capped pricing. Capped pricing is the same as fixed, except that it means that uh, if you have flexibility, that capped rate is the maximum that you will pay and you could pay less. So let's talk about the three, uh, the three types of pricing. What's dynamic pricing? Dynamic pricing is like the stock market. It goes up and down based on supply and demand. Uh, it's the same as when you call a charter broker to book a flight on demand on a one-off basis. Uh, there are jet cards and memberships that use dynamic pricing. Uh, and all that means is that the cost for your trip will be based on when you wanna go, where you wanna go, how far in advance you're booking, and uh, the price is gonna change. So uh, from one trip to the next, even if it's the same route from Teterboro to Palm Beach, the price of that trip is gonna vary based on uh, each, each time you go. Um, if you book a, a trip uh, using dynamic pricing, have to cancel it and then rebook, that price is likely to change. So that's dynamic pricing. Fixed pricing, which is typically articulated as an hourly rate, although there are some fixed route options, uh, that, that's based on the per hour price that you're going to pay. So if a jet card says that they're charging you $6,500 per hour and it's a two hour flight, well, you know, essentially it means you're gonna charge, you're, you're gonna pay $13,000, but there are some other factors uh, that play into what your actual uh, trip cost is gonna be. And I'm gonna get to those in uh, a couple minutes, but that's fixed pricing. Typically there's a fixed rate for a light jet, midsize, super midsize. Uh, some programs have large cabin aircraft. Some programs have specific aircraft types. But you know, the sixty-five hundred dollars an hour, two-hour flight, you can sort of budget how much these flights are going to pay, or you're you're going to um, how much you're going to uh, pay, because as long as you're not traveling on peak days, and as long as you book a set number of hours or days in advance that's your rate. So whether you're going in June or you're going in December from New York to Palm Beach, $6,500 times uh, the length of that flight. Capped rates are like fixed rate pricing. The only difference is if your cap rate is $6,500 per hour, if you have some flexibility uh, to travel um, uh, in a low demand period, your provider may uh, be able to offer you a lower rate. So the most you're gonna pay is $6,500 an hour. So three basic types of jet card or jet membership pricing, dynamic pricing, fixed pricing, and cap pricing. So what else do you need to know to figure out how much uh, the actual flight is gonna cost you? Well, uh, you have to uh, look at the daily and the segment minimums. So what are daily and segment minimums? Those are the, that's the, the minimum charge that you're gonna pay even if your flight is shorter. So they call that in the industry a short leg. Uh, let's assume that your program has 120 minute uh, daily minimum on the light jet and your light jet rate is $6,500 an hour. You take a one hour flight, you take a 60 minute flight. That's your only flight of the day. 
you're still gonna pay that two hours. So $6,500 times two, $13,000. So even though you just flew one hour, your hourly rate $6,500, you're gonna pay $13,000 because the daily minimum was two hours. And it works the same way with segment minimums. So one of the things you're gonna to wanna to keep in mind are what are the daily and segment minimums? And by the way, for subscribers to private jet card comparisons, everything that I'm talking about uh, here, those are the things that we compare in the spreadsheet. We also have our quick compare flight pricing. So you just enter the number of flight minutes and it's gonna tell you based on the rules of the program, uh, what your flight cost is gonna be. So we have the three types of jet card pricing, then you're gonna to wanna to figure out the daily and the segment minimums. Obviously, you're not gonna to wanna to join a program where your flights are always significantly less than the daily and segment minimums. What's next? What else do you have to think about? Well, um, it's where can you use those, those fixed uh, and capped rates with the fixed and cap rate programs? And so there are two uh, two, two terms you'll hear, primary service area and extended service area. So primary service area refers to where those fixed or cap rates apply um, without a surcharge. Extended service area means that the fixed or cap rates apply, but they, uh, there could be a surcharge. So that's typically places like the Caribbean or Mexico or Canada. And the surcharges can range from, uh, you know, five or 10%. Some programs don't have surcharges up to 50 or 100%. Uh, most programs, uh, the primary service area for the fixed and capped rates are within the continental 48 states for the US North American programs. In Europe, it tends to be uh, the main countries in the EU and uh, uh, the UK, um, uh, continental, uh, continental Europe. So you're gonna wanna also make sure when you're joining a program, if you're choosing a fixed or cap rate program, that the places that you want to fly to are within that primary service area or extended service area. And so the other thing I'm gonna come back and talk about in terms of the pricing is when you're doing dynamic pricing, uh, the provider has to figure in repositioning charges, you know, the cost of getting the plane to whatever airport you're leaving from, and then uh, taking it onward after it drops you off. So if you're traveling from really busy airports where there's a lot of private aviation activity, you know, the dynamic pricing sometimes can work out better um, if you're traveling between places where they're gonna have to fly the plane in and then drops you off where there's nobody else who's gonna be taking that plane, you're gonna probably pay a, a higher price, even if that flight is the same as between the two busy airports. With both fixed and cap rates, for the most part, you're only paying for the time you're in the plane. So the repositioning charges are baked in. So yep. what else do you need to know about how much the flight's gonna end up costing? Well, uh, most programs charge taxi time. Uh, that's typically articulated as six minutes on departure, six minutes on arrival, or 12 minutes. So that's two tenths of an hour. Um, again, something we track is how do they bill that? Is that part of the daily minimum or is it on top of the daily minimum? So if the daily minimum is 120 minutes, do they charge you 120 plus the 12 minutes? Or if your flight is less, is that in, included in it? So that's one of the things you're gonna wanna take a look at because if you look at two tenths of uh, an hour and your rate is $6,500 an hour, obviously, you know, that's over a thousand dollars difference uh, uh, based on how they price it. So the other, the other, the other thing that will impact how much you actually pay when you fly, again, with the dynamic and the fixed uh, rate, uh, I'm sorry, with the fixed rate and the um, uh, cap rate programs is how they uh, bill you. Um, there are really two methods. One is actual flight time. So that's like if you went into a taxi cab, they put the meter on and when you get out, the meter goes off. That's what actual flight time is. It's from takeoff to landing. 
that you're billed. So if you have to go around weather or you have headwinds, uh, the flight pricing will be more because if the, the actual flight time is more, you're paying per hour. Um, if you uh, uh, have a program that charges you based on estimated flight time, that's like Uber. You know how much you're gonna pay before you get into the Uber or into the Lyft. And so um, even if the flight is uh, shorter than you think, you're still gonna pay that rate. So, you know, how does the pricing work? Well, there's some additional charges. You may have uh, extra charges if you wanna go to a non-preferred FBO. Uh, in the United States, you're gonna pay an extra 7.5% federal excise tax. Uh, there's a, a, a segment fee of $4.20 per passenger. Some programs have some additional airport fees when you're traveling international. There uh, are some international fees. These all vary by uh, the different providers and the different programs and where you're going. But again, in terms of pricing, if you're trying to figure out how does it work, there's essentially three types of pricing. That's dynamic pricing. That's like the stock market. It's just dependent on the conditions and what you're doing at that time. Then you have the fixed and the capped rates. Fixed is a specific rate that you're paying. Capped means that's the maximum. Typically those are articulated on a per hour basis. And so the nice benefit of the fixed and the capped rates is it gives you uh, the opportunity to really budget your travel. You know how many hours, you know where you're flying. You can estimate pretty pretty accurately how much that flying is gonna cost you uh, during the year. And then you obviously have to uh, take into account the daily minimums, the segment minimums, and make sure that if you go with a fixed or capped rate program, that those programs cover the places that you want to fly. They're either in the primary service area or the extended service area. So that's jet card pricing, jet membership pricing. Again, remember it's not in a name, whether it's a membership or it's a jet card or whatever they want to call it. The thing that you want to focus in is what type of pricing do they offer? Is it dynamic pricing? Is it fixed hourly pricing? Is it fixed route pricing? Is it a capped rate? Uh, and so focus on that. Um, again, uh, if you uh, are trying to figure out which programs are the best fit for your needs, I uh, encourage you come visit privatejetcardcomparisons.com and learn more about subscriber benefits. Uh, we've gathered information from over 250 programs. We update the data constantly. We've done all the work for you. So thank you for joining us today. Uh, I look forward to seeing you back here on the YouTube channel from Private Jet Card Comparisons.